okay so yesterday we have already started with the anti metabolites yesterday we have started with anti metabolites in that we discussed about purine purine analogs and along with this we have pyrimidine analogs pyrimidine analogs and along with that we have anti folate drugs or folic acid analogs folic acid analogs so let us try to understand about the folic acid analogs in this the very very famous drug we have methotrexate very very famous drug this is so every clinical pharmacist you are a hospital pharmacist or a community pharmacist or a clinical pharmacist you should know about methotrexate in detail because methotrexate has wide variety of uses in the hospital it is a narrow therapeutic drug okay and it has very uh, has number of adrs and it also has very potential drug interactions so when patient is taking methotrexate there are chances of failing the treatment and there are chances of getting toxicity so these two things are possible when patient is taking methotrexate so when a patient is taking methotrexate clinical pharmacist should advise uh, very uh, um, useful information to the patient as well as to the physician okay so in today's lecture we'll try to learn maximum important points whatever we need to learn about methotrexate okay starting the pharmacology of methotrexate let me uh, add some points first thing see we we all know that folic acid folic acid is the type of vitamin b9 it is a b complex vitamin very very important vitamin this folic acid vitamin has wide variety of sources in the uh, environment we have non vegetarian sources we have vegetarian sources so this folic acid when we take this folic acid when it when it is taken through oral route it will be entered into the gi tract and it is undergone into uh, different uh, metabolic reactions methylated metabolic reactions occurs and this folic acid will show many actions in that important actions of folic acid folic acid is important in dna synthesis it is important in dna synthesis and it is very important in activating vitamin b12 so this folic acid folic acid is not synthesized by humans humans can't synthesize folic acid do you know this point because see to synthesize folic acid there are certain enzymes which are required and those enzymes are not determined by our body that's why we can't synthesize folic acid in our body but few bacteria few fungi and few plants they can synthesize folic acid themselves from a basic uh, compound called para amino benzoic acid which is called paba bacteria fungi and plants they can synthesize folic acid from this basic amino acid uh, from this basic compound paba when when see this this paba which is present in the cell this paba is converted into uh dihydrofolic acid dihydrofolate simply it is called dihydrofolate in the presence of folate folate synthase or synthetase synthase bacteria fungi and plants they will synthesize they will synthesize folic acid from this paba initially this paba is converted into dihydrofolate in the uh, presence of in the presence of folate synthase enzyme or folate synthetase enzyme again this a uh, dihydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate this tetrahydrofolate is active form actually this active form and this tetrahydrofolate is useful for synthesizing dna or rna or purines and pyrimidines purines and pyrimidines are basic building blocks of dna and rna and through that this tetrahydrofolate is important in production of dna and with that it also helps in just dna replication and with that it helps in cell division cell division so here from the paba paba is converted into dihydrofolate in the presence of folate synthetase and dihydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate in the presence of folate folate reductase this is important folate reductase enzyme and this enzyme converts dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate tetrahydrofolate is helpful in synthesizing dna rna purines pyrimidines and all this is important in bacteria right in the same way actually in humans this this synthet synthetic process is not seen humans are directly depending on the folic acid folic acid which is present in diet we have dietary sources so in dietary sources we have folic acid actually this folic acid is it, it is in different forms folate is different 
folic acid is different it is combined with few other compounds okay so the methylated form of folic acid when it enters into the body in the body the, actually the dihydrofolate dihydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate tetrahydrofolate and this tetrahydrofolate again helps in the production of dna and rna in the presence of folate reductase enzyme in humans also in humans also dihydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate but here the from faba to dihydrofolate this reaction is not seen in humans this is seen in bacteria and in plants but in humans dihydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate in the presence of folate reductase enzyme folate reductase enzyme so this tetrahydrofolate which is active form of folic acid it is important in synthesizing dna and rna and through that it helps in dna replication and it helps in cell synthesis i mean cell division this is the general uh, physiology which is seen in the body this is the physiology of folic acid i think everybody understood folic acid is the b9 vitamin it is not synthesized by the humans but it is synthesized by the bacteria fungi and plants and this is the method of synthesizing folic acid in the bacteria but in in humans humans can't synthesize dihydrofolate from faba okay this is important point you have to remember okay now you see so this is the basic structure of uh, folic acid so folic acid is made up of mainly three components initially this blue color component is 2 amino 4 hydroxy pteridine it is a pteridine mo uh, molecule pteridine molecule and pteridine is combined with paba paba paramino benzoic acid and again these two compounds are again interlinked with glutamates so folic acid folic acid which is available in different dietary sources or in the form of polyglutamates they are in the form of polyglutamates always remember the folic acid what we get from bacteria fungi plants and some other animals they are in the form of polyglutamates folic acid it is it is not available directly as folates it is available as polyglutamates and these polyglutamates when when we take through oral route from the oral route they will be uh transferred from the mucosal layers and in the body in the body these polyglutamates of folic acid will convert into dihydrofolate and dihydrofolate further converts into tetrahydrofolate and this tetrahydrofolate is important in uh activating uh, vitamin b12 it is important in forming purines and pyrimidines purines and pyrimidines synthesis for synthesis purpose this tetrahydrofolate is important okay so this is the general physiology now you see in today's topic we are discussing about folate antagonist or folate folate uh, analog folate analog actually in folate analogs one very famous drug we have that is methotrexate methotrexate its chemical structure is very similar to folate folic acid that's why it is called folate analog in previous class i told we have purine analogs we have pyrimidine analogs in the same way methotrexate is folate analog okay see just now i told you one point in the body the uh, dihydrofolate the dihydrofolate which is present in the body should convert into tetrahydrofolate and this tetrahydrofolate is active form methylated form this tetrahydrofolate will have pharmacological actions for this conversion from dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate we need one enzyme in our body already enzyme is present that is folate folate reductase folate reductase yes this folate reductase enzyme converts dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate and see this folate reductase enzyme is inhibited by methotrexate methotrexate inhibits this enzyme and by that what happens you know dihydrofolate is not converted into tetrahydrofolate and further no purine synthesis occurs no pyrimidine synthesis occurs and no dna synthesis occurs and no cell division occurs okay and through that it stops the cell division in in normal cells as well as in most neoplastic cells in previous class i told see in our body the neoplastic cells will be proliferating continuously they have they don't have any periodic uh, timing continuously every time they will be proliferating but our normal cells our normal cells will be dividing periodically whenever normal cell cell uh, necrosis occurs or when cell apoptosis occurs at that time only new cells will synthesize so normal cells will synthesize whenever they are required but neoplastic cells what they do they continuously keep dividing so to stop the cell division in neoplastic cells we give methotrexate and all other cytotoxic drugs all other cytotox cytotoxic drugs will have same action so actually we are giving these cytotoxic drugs anti cancer drugs to stop the cell division in neoplastic cells but they will also show action on normal cells and with that most of the cytotoxic drugs what they do 
they will decrease the cell synthesis in the epithelial tissue they will decrease the cell synthesis in the bone marrow because in bone marrow and epithelial cells in GA tract and in skin the cell germinating cells are uh, the density is high germinating cells are high in those areas so it will cause uh, decreased cell division in those particular areas all these points in previous classes already we have discussed okay now let me tell you about methotrexate first important point see if you see the history initially have you heard about ella pragada subara ella pragada subara how many of you have heard about ella pragada subara he is the telugu person he is from uh, uh, he is from andhra pradesh he is telugu person and very very famous biochemist he is very famous biochemist this, he, he is the scientist actually this he is a doctor biochemist ella pragada subara what did he did you know initially he identified one compound he identified one compound the name of the compound is aminopterin aminopterin actually this this aminopterin compound is very very uh, similar to folic acid folic acid and which is very similar to methotrexate okay so aminopterin is the analog of methotrexate from aminopterin only methotrexate is uh, uh, synthesized okay so initially error pagada subara what he did he studied that i mean i mean he he uh, developed this molecule and he understood that this aminopterin is very similar to folic acid and this aminopterin is having anti neoplastic activity anti neoplastic activity and he he studied that this aminopterin can be used for leukemias leukemias but initially this aminopterin has very uh, bad adverse effects so after a uh, few other few other clinical trials and few other studies many new compounds were uh, developed from this aminopterin and finally uh, methotrexate was studied methotrexate was studied and methotrexate was exactly this this methotrexate was studied on the animals and they found that methotrexate is very effective drug for anti cancer activity anti cancer activity and this methotrexate which is having anti cancer activity was identified by uh, there was one uh, female scientist jane jane cook right jane cook right karke one scientist we have she is american based scientist jane cook right she uh, she uh, identified that methotrexate is having anti cancer properties better than aminopterin actually yella prakara subarao is the person who developed aminopterin and this aminopterin has led to synthesis uh, uh, development of methotrexate and from there jane cook right she found that this drug is showing anti neoplastic activity okay so being being the indian we have to be proud that yella prakara subarao is one person at least one person who developed a uh, drug for cancer okay actually from india pakistan from bangladesh and from sri lanka and all other uh, asian countries we don't have scientists we don't have scientists who develop drugs always what we do we try to copy the drugs yes yes we copy the drugs from other countries and we try to manufacture okay so at least ella uh, prakara subarao is the one person actually i am from andhra pradesh that's why i am uh, knowing his name anyways chalo so this is one point we have to remember and now let's yeah let's start the pharmacology of methotrexate <clears throat> see first important point methotrexate methotrexate is not a simple drug you have to keep in mind methotrexate has three major functions number one methotrexate is used as anti neoplastic agent anti neoplastic agent anti neoplastic agent means it is used as anti cancer agent number 1 and for cancer see methotrexate is very very commonly used for choriocarcinoma choriocarcinoma in yesterday's class i told what is choriocarcinoma so methotrexate methotrexate is first action of methotrexate is it is uh, very useful as anti neoplastic agent and in that it is used for choriocarcinoma it is used for acute lymphoid leukemia and also it is used for uh, breast cancer okay so these different types of cancers it is widely used this is first action and second very important action of methotrexate is it is having immunosuppressive action immunosuppressive action and this immunosuppressive action it is very commonly used in rheumatoid arthritis very very important it is very famous for rheumatoid arthritis not for anti cancer activity it is very actually it is it is developed for anti cancer only 
but later on it is it became very famous for rheumatoid arthritis okay and for uh, as it is having immunosuppressive action it is also very effectively used for psoriasis psoriasis about the psoriasis and rheumatoid arthritis one day we'll discuss these are very important and autoimmune disorders okay and along with this some other autoimmune disorders they are used uh, i mean this uh, uh, methotrexate is used for inflammatory bowel disease also inflammatory bowel disease and other yes yes pardon yeah it is used in SLE, very good sle systemic lupus erythematosus and it is also used in some organ transplantation okay organ transplantation also it is used so this is second immunosuppressive action this is very important action and in rheumatoid arthritis actually it is used as dmard dmard okay uh, this is modifying anti rheumatic drug uh, sorry uh, yeah so uh, it is important in all these conditions and third one third important action of this methotrexate is it is having anti inflammatory property anti inflammatory inflammatory property so due to this anti inflammatory property it can be used in some arthralgias and also in rheumatoid arthritis particularly in rheumatoid arthritis it will reduce inflammation it will reduce pain okay it will reduce swelling in the joints so methotrexate first important point methotrexate is effective as anti neoplastic agent it is effective as immunosuppressive agent and it is also used as anti inflammatory agent so these three are very very important uh, uh, uses which is used in the hospital okay so these three points and another important point you have to remember always remember methotrexate is narrow therapeutic drug because it is having narrow therapeutic window i think everybody knows what is narrow therapeutic window okay L slight uh, changes in the dose can either decrease the drug concentration in the serum and that will fail the treatment and slight increase in the dose can cause severe toxicity because they are having very narrow therapeutic window okay their therapeutic range is very very less okay so methotrexate has very narrow therapeutic range that is important point you have to remember now let us see the mechanism of action just now i already explained you mechanism of action of methotrexate see in our body in the cells in the cells the dihydrofolate or dihydrofolic acid is converted into tetrahydrofolic acid which is the active form active form of folic acid right and this reaction occurs in the presence of dihydrofolate reductase okay so this tetrahydrofolate again it helps in synthesizing purines and pyrimidines and thymidic thymidylate and it is important in production of dna rna and further it helps in cell division all these things we have just discussed okay so methotrexate what it does methotrexate okay. will inhibit this enzyme and by that it stops the activation of dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate and by that it stops all these actions simple mechanism mechanism is very easy now i would like to relate the same mechanism with certain uh, antimicrobial agents antimicrobial agents there is a very famous antimicrobial agent which is called sulfonamide sulfonamide i think you might have heard about sulfonamide right see i will i will try to tell you the mechanism of sulfonamide simple just now i told see just imagine this is a bacteria okay in bacterial cell bacteria synthesizes folic acid by themselves right that point i told so bacteria synthesizes folic acid from faba faba is converted into dihydrofolic acid dihydrofolic acid again converts into tetrahydrofolic acid and here we have an enzyme that is folate synthase folate synthase and here what we have dihydrofolate dihydrofolate reductase reductase right see these two enzymes are very important back important in bacteria we are talking this reaction in bacteria not in humans particularly in bacteria so these two reactions occurs in bacteria and bacteria synthesizes this tetrahydrofolate and further bacteria will help i mean this tetrahydrofolate will help in dna synthesis and dna replication and cell division and all so here we have sulfonamides sulfonamides sulfon in sulfonamides we have sulfa salazin sulfa methoxazol sulfa doxin there are so many drugs in sulfonamides in that very very famous drug in yesterday's class i told co trimoxazole co trimoxazole co trimoxazole is very very famous still today also we are using this drug it is not co trimoxazole co trimoxazole is another drug co trimoxazole co trimoxazole is it is anti fungal yes it is anti fungal co trimoxazole is different co trimoxazole is different what is co trimoxazole co trimoxazole is the combination of trimethoprim trimethoprim plus 
sulfa methoxazole sulfa methoxazole time is between 1 is to 5 ratio it is 1 is to 5 ratio anyways chalo cotrimoxazole is very famous sulfonamide that we already know now you see the bacteria which tries to synthesize the tetrahydrofolate from PABA here two enzymes are required this sulfonamides will go and inhibit this enzyme which enzyme folate synthetase enzyme and here trimethoprim tri trimethoprim will inhibit di i mean uh, dihydrofolate reductase enzyme now what is the mechanism of methotrexate what is the mechanism of methotrexate methotrexate is having similar mechanism like trimethoprim right methotrexate is having similar mechanism like trimethoprim but yes but remember one thing remember one thing sulfonamides will inhibit these enzymes particularly in bacteria not in human beings very very important that's why sulfonamides can't be used as immunosuppressive agents and they can't be used in cancer number one and methotrexate methotrexate can't be used as antibacterial agent because it will not act in bacterial it will not act in bacterial enzymes this point you have to understand you have to remember okay method mechanism is same trimethoprim mechanism and methotrexate mechanism is same their enzymes are similar but trimethoprim and sulf, uh, sulfonamides are acting in bacteria methotrexate is particularly acting in human cells and particularly in neoplastic cells or in uh, rheumatoid arthritis and in different conditions and it will inhibit this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme that you have to keep in mind i think this mechanism is clear to you all in this any doubt if i missed any point you can you can correct me okay anyways chalo. now we understood we understood about mechanism of action of methotrexate simple made what methotrexate does methotrexate will inhibit uh, dihydrofolate reductase enzyme and by that it stops the dna replication simple mechanism is done now let's talk about pharmacokinetics of methotrexate kinetics this is very very important because methotrexate is narrow therapeutic drug narrow therapeutic drug so it has chances of either decreasing the plasma drug concentration or it may also increase the plasma drug concentration so if plasma drug concentration increases what happens it will cause toxicity if plasma drug concentration decreases it will it will go to subtherapeutic dose subtherapeutic dose and it will stop the action okay so these two things are possible so uh, methotrexate is available in oral form it is available in iv form so iv injections we have we can go in im okay it is available in im form iv infusion as well as iv bolus and also it is available in oral form but mainly in hospitals we can prefer oral form only because it is easily available and oral bioavailability oral bioavailability is approximately 50 percent this one you have to remember methotrexate is not completely absorbed it is not completely absorbed only 50 to 60 percent of methotrexate is absorbed and when methotrexate is given along with food food will delay absorption of methotrexate remember this point food will delay the absorption of methotrexate so always advise methotrexate in just before food or half an hour half an hour or one hour before food that is you have to uh, advise okay next so its availability is approximately 50 percent from ga tract when it is absorbed it is it is transported to most of the tissues it has very limited cerebrospinal fluid okay it will not cross blood brain barrier it is having very limited uh, entry into the cerebrospinal fluid this is one point you have to remember and see in the metabolism it is metabolized in the liver but remember only 30 to 30 to 40 percent of methotrexate is metabolized in the liver and remaining remaining form of methotrexate is excreted through urine in unchanged form so majority majority of methotrexate is excreting from urine in unchanged form only 30 to 40 percent of or approximately 50 percent of the drug is metabolized in the uh, liver so always remember the patient who is having liver injury in that cases compulsory we have to restrict the dose we have to decrease the dose and the patient who is having chronic kidney disease or acute kidney disease or renal impairment or renal insufficiency in those cases also we have to decrease the doses because it is excreting in unchanged form from urine that's why okay it is a it is a narrow therapeutic drug that's why we have to focus if patient is having cirrhosis or if patient is having hepatitis restrict the dose if patient is having chronic kidney disease in that cases also we have to decrease the dose okay this is important point in the kinetics clear now let us understand the drug interactions 
drug interactions are very very important with methotrexate always remember see there are certain drugs like salicylates salicylates we have uh, probinicid probinicid salicylates and probinicid what they do you know they will decrease they will decrease the tubular tubular secretion and with that what they do they will decrease the excretion excretion and with that they will increase the toxicity clear always remember when methotrexate is given with salicylates and probinicid they will simply they will decrease the excretion of drug and they will potentiate the toxicity simple point okay next always remember there are other drugs like sulfonamides sulfonamides salicy again salicylates 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 and we have vitamin k vitamin k all these drugs what they do you know they are having high protein binding capacity these drugs what they do they will try to displace the methotrexate from the proteins and what they do they will again increase the free form of methotrexate and they will potentiate toxicity this is first interaction this is second interaction are you all following me yes see first drug interaction when methotrexate is given along with salicylates salicylates may best example is aspirin okay when methotrexate is given either with aspirin or with probinicid this both the drugs what they do they will decrease the excretion of methotrexate when these drugs decreases the excretion what happens the methotrexate concentration increases in the body right so it potentiates toxicity who aspirin and probinicid will potentiate toxicity first interaction second interaction we have certain drugs like sulfonamides salicylates vitamin k and we also have sulfonyl uh, uh, i mean sulfonyl ureas sulfonyl ureas all these drugs are having high protein binding capacity when methotrexate see just imagine methotrexate see methotrexate travels from one place to another place by binding on the plasma proteins only no the plasma proteins in our body what they do they will bind the drugs and they will travel from one place to another place whenever the drug is bound to the plasma it will not show action their action is not seen but if the drug is in free form in the plasma they will show their action now methotrexate was bound to the plasma protein okay along with methotrexate if sulfonamide is given if salicylates is given if vitamin k is given if sulfonyl urea is given many other drugs are there which are having high affinity to bind on the plasma proteins these are potentially uh, uh, having high probability of binding to the plasma these drugs what they do they will go and bind on the plasma and they will displace the methotrexate methotrexate will be dis displaced from the plasma and this drugs will commence it on the plasma with that what will happen methotrexate free form increases in the blood with that it will cause methotrexate toxicity clear and along with this we have tetracyclines also tetracyclines uh, we have certain drugs all those drugs will increase the methotrexate toxicity these two drug interactions always you have to remember probinicid you have to remember probinicid is having drug interaction in the uh, kidneys in excretion it is decreasing and these drugs are having metabolism i mean in the distribution drug interactions all these are having distribution drug interactions in the metabolism we don't have any interaction and in uh, absorption we have certain interactions when methotrexate is given with food food we interact and with that drug interactions can be seen in absorption okay so these are pharmacokinetic drug interactions interactions can be seen in absorption interactions can be seen in absorption interactions can be seen in distribution they can be seen in metabolism and excretion here metabolism it is not completely metabolized that's why there is no interaction in metabolism but in absorption if they are given along with food absorption decreases this is one interaction and in distribution all these drugs sulfonamides salicylates and here bilirubin also bilirubin 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 you know along with methotrexate if if sulfonamide salicylates vitamin k the sulfonyl ureas are given if patient is already having hyperbilirubinemia in that cases bilirubin will be displaced you know that and with that it causes characters okay all these points we'll discuss another time so these are pharmacokinetic drug interactions with methotrexate i think this point you all understood clear now let me talk yeah one one more important point you have to remember in previous class already i told all cytotoxic drugs cytotoxic drugs or anti neoplastic drugs will have uh emitogenic and teratogenic teratogenic 
they are having teratogenic activity. So here methotrexate is already listed in the mild teratogenic drug. So methotrexate can cause emetogenic and teratogenicity. Teratogenicity. What is teratogenicity? What is teratogenicity? First year, secondary students tell me. What is teratogenicity? When these drugs are given, they will they will cause dysfunction or disformation or abnormal formation of the fetus. Okay, they may cause phocomelia, they may cause any other thing. All these all those things will come under teratogenicity. Okay, malformation in the fetus is called teratogenicity. Anyways, so all cytotoxic drugs is having. Uh, I mean, see, you can just see the drugs which are having high teratogenic activity. This platinumstein, uh, cyclophosphamide in previous class we we have seen act. Actinomycin D, the carbazin, lomastin, all these drugs we, we have to discuss. We have already discussed about this cyclophosphamide, caroplatin. All these drugs are having moderate teratogenic activity and mild one, methotrexate is one example. Vincristine, hydroxy, about hydroxyurea we discuss and 6 thioguanine in yesterday's class we have discussed. Fluorouracil, busulfan, chlorambucil, bleomycin. L asparaginase, this is important. See, in previous classes I told L asparaginase, L asparaginase is important in leukemia. L asparaginase is the enzyme which is used as antineoplastic drug. Even this also causes emetogenic action. These points you have to remember. Now let's talk about the adverse effects. See, most cytotoxic drugs, most cytotoxic drugs are having general toxicity. General toxicity. About the general toxicity, in previous classes, I already explained in each tissue, starting from the buccal cavity in the brain, in the CNS buccal cavity to the anus. It is having many adverse effects. Okay. So particularly if we see the adverse effects for methotrexate, always remember methotrexate as it is a cytotoxic drug, it causes bone marrow suppression. Already we know that methotrexate is used as immunosuppressive agent. Immunosuppressive agent. That's why all immunosuppressive agents will have bone marrow suppressive action. So when bone marrow suppression is seen, what will happen? <coughs> patient will have pancytopenia, pancytopenia because in bone marrow from the pluripotent stem cell, all lymphoid cells, myeloid cells, myeloblasts, lymphoblasts from that all granulocytes, platelets, RBCs, lymphocytes, everything will be synthesized from this bone marrow, you know. If bone marrow is suppressed, what will happen? No cells will be produced. If all the cells are decreased in the body, starting from RBC, WBC, platelets, that is called pancytopenia. So pancytopenia is one adverse effect with methotrexate. Along with that, it causes nodosis. Very, very important. It causes nodosis and oral ulcers. Very, very important. This is oral ulcers. See, the patient who is taking methotrexate, they will have oral as well as GI, GIT ulcers. GIT ulcers. Why, you know, the epithelial tissue, the epithelial tissue in the buccal cavity is peeled away. The epithelial tissue is removed and in the GI tract also, the protective layer is removed with that from the oral cavity from the oral cavity to the GA tract total GA tract it will cause ulcers so it can also cause it can also cause bleeding bleeding from bleeding from GA tract internal bleeding we call it we call it internal bleeding okay so methotrexate causes oral ulcers very very important point <clears throat> say in moderate doses in moderate doses this uh, methotrexate causes uh, liver injury liver injury but in high doses it causes cirrhosis cirrhosis so it has high uh, hepatotoxic ability also that is important and in prolonged use compulsory in prolonged use of methotrexate it causes cirrhosis of the liver and it will damage the liver okay so these are important adverse effects which are associated with methotrexate always remember Methotrexate causes bone marrow suppression, pancytopenia, oral ulcers, GI upset, GI epithelial tissue, GI bleeding, and it causes liver injury. Liver injury. That's why methotrexate is always given once, once a week. And the dose, approximately the dose is 7.5 to 15 mg. 7.5 to 15. And it, it, it depends. I mean, it depends from patient to patient. Minimum dose is 7.5 and it exceeds up to 25 mg. Okay, so 7.5 mg actually in our hospital in SSG, we find 7.5 mg once a week. So this is the common dose. And in few cases, if methotrexate toxicity occurs, in methotrexate toxicity, we have folinic acid, folinic, folinic acid. 
treatment in toxicity that I will explain you in previous here in this you can see. This is also called leucovirin, 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 folinic acid, N5, 4 mile uh, tetrahydrofolate or citrovorum factor. All these are the names for this folinic acid. This folinic acid is similar to folic acid, but it is not a folic acid. So when patient is having methotrexate toxicity, when patient has methotrexate toxicity, what we have to do? We have to check whether patient is having GI ulcers. We have to check patient's bone marrow suppression. And based on these two, we have to treat the patient. Okay. So always suggest leucovirin to the patient who is suspected with methotrexate toxicity. And one more important point you have to remember if patient is having leukemia, leukemia, in leukemia, we suggest methotrexate. Methotrexate is decreasing the activity of folic acid, right? Methotrexate is decreasing the activity of folic acid. In previous days, in, in 1947, when er Erapagra Subara was identifying this drug, in that time, what they found, you know, they gave folic acid, folic acid to certain patients who are having leukopenia, I mean leukemia, and they gave uh, methotrexate, methotrexate. When folic acid is given to the patients who are suffering with leukemia, in those patients, leukemia is aggravating with folic acid. Folic acid always aggravates leukemia, condition always aggravates. And when methotrexate is given, methotrexate is decreasing the uh, division of neoplastic cells. It is decreasing leukemia condition. So they found that folic acid, overuse of folic acid has no beneficiary effects in leukemia. Remember that. Folic acid, folic acid has no beneficiary effect in leukemia. But this folic acid can be used if patient is having pernicious anemia, if patient is having uh, vitamin B12 deficiency, if patient is having anemia, in that cases we can go. But folic acid should not be given in leukemia. Remember that. Because folic acid will again increase the synthesis of uh, purines and pyrimidines in the neoplastic cells and further it will uh, aggravate the condition. Remember that point. Anyways, so we have seen the adverse effects. Now let us see the contraindications. In which condition methotrexate should not be advised? First, it should never be given in pregnancy because it is having mild teratogenic activity. It is not advised to the patient who is breastfeeding. Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding ladies also should not be advised with methotrexate. Number three, if patient is having liver injury, liver injury or liver failure, liver injury, we should not suggest methotrexate because methotrexate is metabolized by the liver and it again decreases the activity of liver and its uh, toxicity can be seen. So remember one point. If a physician is planning to start methotrexate, if a physician is planning to start methotrexate to the patient, always we have to undergo liver function test. Okay, this is important advice we have to give to the physician. Without undergoing liver function test, we should not start, blindly we should not start methotrexate treatment. Okay, this is important contraindication we have to go. And see in few cases, patients who are having leukopenia, leukopenia, and pancytopenia in that cases also we should not go and patients who are already having active infection active infection due to bone marrow suppression in these cases also we should not suggest methotrexate and another important point as i already told it can cause mouth ulcers and peptic ulcers gi tract ulcers if patient is having active gi bleeding or if patient is already having peptic ulcer in that cases also we should avoid methotrexate these are certain uh, important points contraindications about methotrexate clear i think everybody are understanding me right now you see i would like to tell some other important points about methotrexate i would like to add about the resistance can methotrexate cause can methotrexate cause resistance in the body yes or no who will tell? Can methotrexate cause resistance in the body or not? Anybody from the class? Yes, it can cause resistance. See, whenever the drug is acting on the metabolic pathway, metabolic pathway, if, if the drug is acting on certain metabolic pathways, in that, if the metabolic pathway is altered with the different mechanism, what will happen? This drug is acting on this pathway, but the particular cell has shifted or it changed its metabolic pathway from one this pathway to the different pathway. 
but their ultimate product is received i mean their product is they are getting but they are getting this product for example tetra hydrofolate is the product cell should get this so here we are the cells are synthesizing tetra hydrofolate tetra hydrofolate through uh, dihydrofolate reductase enzyme right but if the cell undergoes another metabolic reaction and through that reaction if it synthesizes tetra hydrofolate in that cases our drug will not show action so first method of resistance is uh, if mechanism is altered if mechanism is altered in that cases it will cause resistance number one number two see there are certain cells or anti uh, there are neoplastic cells which will uh, develop one mechanism okay this mechanism they will stop the entry of drug into the cell drug entry drug entry will be decreased okay they can't allow they can't allow the drug to pass into the cell because they are understanding that methotrexate is coming into the cell and this methotrexate is inhibiting this enzyme and by that it is stopping the dna replication so what cell does always remember all living organisms all living cells will try to modify it is the it is it is it is the law of nature always our cells our tissues our bodies our enzymes all living organisms will try to modify based on the external environment and based on the uh, external uh, damages that happen see if a human being if a white man if a white man goes to africa or in any hot climate condition after few years what you can see this white man will become black black in color why you know this white person is modifying himself by the exposure of x-rays our body itself is modifying so that they can they can resist to the uh, x-rays uh, sorry uh, infrared infrared rays and all other rays from the sunlight okay so this is just a modification every human being every living organism will have modification mechanism in the body so here also when methotrexate is abused the cancer cells what they do they will modify themselves and they will not allow the methotrexate to enter inside that is second method of resistance okay and another method of resistance see the third method of resistance the cells will develop certain efflux mechanisms in last class i told certain efflux mechanisms these efflux channels what they do they will eject the drug outside when the drug enters inside what happens the cell, the cell will recognize that something foreign body has come into the cell so what it does they will immediately efflux out they will eject the drug outside that is called efflux transporter expression or development of effluxer transporter efflux efflux transport transport uh, expression can be seen expression can be seen in certain tissues in previous class i told one mdrd mdr1 okay and uh, it is also called p glycoprotein pgp pgp okay i think you remember this pgp molecules what they do this pgp molecules will try to eject here for methotrexate it is not pgp actually this pgp is particularly seen for vincristine vincristine in last class i told vincristine is ejected out of the cell if the cell is expressed with pgp in the same way for methotrexate also for methotrexate one efflux transporter is there that is mrp mrp remember methotrexate mrp m m methotrexate and m mrp mrp is the efflux transporter which is expressed on the cells which will try to efflux the methotrexate out of the cell this is third method of uh, resistance so methotrexate also can cause resistance in the neoplastic cells as well as in the normal cells so this is about resistance uh, let me see if i did i miss anything we have seen mechanism we have seen adverse effects we have seen drug interactions uh, mechanism of action yeah it is available in oral form as well as in iv form that we have seen dose the normal dose is 7.5 to 25 7.5 to 25 mg and that is given once a week it is given once a week and particularly it is it is used for rheumatoid arthritis that you have to remember or uh, i i think uh, i covered most of the points Yes.